This video is looking at writing an analytical essay in visual arts with a specific focus on XXXC paragraph construction. The example question that we're going to look at is artworks which are designed to provoke and shock audiences have limited artistic value. Discuss this quote with reference to a range of artworks. So before launching into our response, we identify key words, words such as audience, which includes critics, the general public, curators, teachers and students. It's also a good idea to develop a synonym list for some of those key words from the question or the quote. So words such as provoke, shock and artistic value could be interchanged with words such as elicit, outrage and artistic merit just so that you don't sound too repetitive. I'm sure you can think of other words as well. Discuss means to present points for and or against. So with this particular essay, it's very difficult to take a position uh, against the quote or 100% for the quote. So we're going to qualify uh, this quote and we'll look at that shortly. When it says a range of artworks, I think it's a range of three or more artists with a couple of examples perhaps of their artworks. So before launching into your response, you also need to brainstorm your ideas. I've just written a few key points here of the kind of things that should be in your brainstorm. Your brainstorms should fill up probably a whole A4 page. So you need to identify your artworks and your artists and examples of their work uh, that have pro provoked uh, shock and outrage. How did the audience respond? What was the result to the artwork? Did it get vandalised, destroyed, removed, given back to the artist or some other form of censorship? And who got to be the judge? Was it the general public? Was it the curators? Was it the critics? And also your brainstorm should include aspects of the world um, in terms of the context in which the works were created and the artists in which the artists work. How did they challenge the status quo? What ideas did the artworks explore and comment on? From your brainstorm, you should be able to develop your topic sentences. These are your main ideas for your paragraphs. And from, from your topic sentences or your main ideas, you should be able to formulate a thesis statement. Sometimes you can develop a thesis statement simply by rewording the question to indicate your point of view. However, as I already said, for this particular essay, I, th I have chosen to focus on uh, this idea of artistic value and different aspects that influence an audience's determination of value. So our thesis statement for this essay is going to be the determination of what constitutes artistic value in a work of art is largely defined by the audience and their reaction to the work in a given time and place. So our first paragraph, your topic sentence, um, should introduce your first main point that supports your thesis statement. This is the main idea that will be covered in the paragraph. For this particular paragraph, I'm going to focus on the audience's knowledge and understanding of the artist and their work. Uh, has a, a very big influence on whether or not they think that a provocative piece of work has artistic value. So audiences often lack the knowledge and understanding to appreciate the purpose and meaning of an artist's work. Traditionally, prior to the modern age, art through classicist standards has generally served the purpose of communicating ideas about beauty and justice through mimesis, enabling the viewer to experience aesthetic pleasure. For some viewers, this continues to be the litmus test for what constitutes good art. So now we're going to extend on our topic sentence. We're going to give a context, who, what, when, where, how, of the main point identifying relevant artists, people, places, countries, dates or events that relate to the question. And I've chosen Edouard Manet. One artist, Edouard Manet, 
challenged these long-held beliefs through his depictions of the female nude. His painting Luncheon on the Grass, De Genoux sur la Herbe, was rejected by the 1863 Paris Salon and then exhibited in the Salon de Refusis. Only two years later, his work Olympia was admitted to the Salon, provoking public outcry and ridicule. So I'm just highlighting some of those key points in our extend um, and where the hat, who, what, when, where and how appears within that extend sentence. Okay. All right, we're now going to go to our example. So here we begin to provide evidence to support our topic sentence. There was widespread condemnation of both works for several reasons. And in this paragraph, I include, it says, include three aspects of the artwork or an artwork to support your main point. I've got four, so this is the first one. The settings were ordinary, for example, fully dressed men in the company of a naked woman in a well-known public park in Paris, rather than a mythological and idealized setting. The nude was depicted without the guise of classical proportions, with illuminated, soft, fleshy skin. So this nude woman, or naked woman, in Manet's Luncheon on the Grass was just seated as if she was sitting down at a picnic. Not the reclining, graceful nude um, who's asleep so that you can gaze at her beautiful body, um, which is so familiar in classicist works. The paint was broad, flat and painterly, showing brush strokes, giving an unfinished appearance. So Manet wasn't, as, wasn't afraid to show his brushwork, whereas traditionally um, artists tried to remove all indication of brushwork. Furthermore, Olympia was a recognised prostitute, signified by her worn shoes and neck choker with the black alley cat, the creature of the night in the background. So we've already talked about um, the expansion of Paris, the expansion of the boulevards. Paris was turned into a, a modern city uh, through Napoleon III and prostitution was rife in the city of Paris at this time. Unlike demure depictions of classical nudes looking away, Manet's Olympia, her impertinent expression gazes directly at the viewer in complete acceptance of her own nakedness. So now what we're going to do is um, explain or give a judgment. While this question asks us to discuss, in our discussion we're going to include a judgment because this is what brings your essay up to a band six. You won't get a band six without offering some sort of evaluation. So in the strengths, in this area of your paragraph, we SWOT. So we look at the strengths or weaknesses, opportunities and threats of the artist's work. And we include quotes wherever possible. Manet challenges the viewer to acknowledge, acknowledge that they are indeed gazing at a real woman's nakedness as a sexual object, not admiring the beauty of a classical nude in an, in an idealized mythological setting. The public at the time rejected Olympia as indecent, obscene and showy. Those quotes, by the way, are from Zola's critique of the audience and his praise of Manet's work in the review that we've already read. The public at the time rejected Olympia as indecent, obscene and showy and not a true work of art, forcing the cur curators to hang the work higher to make it less open to ridicule. And yes, that is a form of censorship. How is it then that only 43 years later, Olympia was admired as a masterpiece in the Louvre? Emile Zola, friend of Manet and art cricket critic, offers an answer when referring to the audience. Originality, that's what shocks. We are all more or less, without knowing it, creatures of habit who obstinately follow the same beaten path to which we are accustomed. He stated that the public never try to probe further and are aroused to mirth, so that's ridicule or amusement, or anger. Zola refers to the public's rejection of Delacroix's genius some centuries before and reminds readers that there are no common denominators, no rules, no obligations of any sort, only living men 
bringing with them a living expression of life. So Delacroix is one of those artists in the art canon. He does belong to that prestigious club. But when he was painting in his lifetime, he was rejected too. Indeed, Zola states that it is only, it is only a question of education that will enable public audiences and critics alike to expand their ideas about what is art. So once we've given a, a discussion and a judgment in our explain section of our paragraph, we're going to move on to the concluding link. So here you can either wrap up the paragraph by linking it back to the topic sentence or you can also um, give a hint at the end about where your next paragraph is heading. Hence with understanding the author's purpose and familiarity of their technique, it is possible to appreciate a new work of art and thereby circumvent shock and outrage, often brought about through ignorance. This, however, is dependent on the audience's motivation to view art as more simply entertainment, but rather investigate artworks as a valuable form of expression in response to societal issues and events. So before we go on to the next paragraph, we're going to have a quick look at other artists that you could have used. So you could have used Marcel Duchamp's Fountain, uh, Piero Manzoni's Art of Shit, Richard Sierra's Tilted Art, Ron Robertson Swan's Vault. Okay, so you might want to have a look at those in your completion of that first paragraph. The next paragraph, I haven't written this one, I've just provided a topic sentence. Artists today criticize society and its values, tackling explosive political issues in a way that can defy authority, challenge the mainstream and offend people. In doing so, any artistic merit that might be inherent within a work is disregarded by those in the protesting majority, rejecting that, work, that the work can even be called art. So I've just highlighted that. Instead of writing artistic value, we're using our synonyms. So to extend, um, here are some artists that you might want to use uh, in your extend part of the paragraph or another artist that you have found interesting in your own research. So you refer to three aspects of the artwork to support your main point. Be selective about those aspects. You only want to choose aspects that are supportive of your topic sentence. You swap that artist's work. Try to include quotes from critics at the time. Concluding statements, something about the role of art to reflect society, Forcing the public to discuss uncomfortable topics lead to an idea of censorship. This is the hint for the next paragraph. Again, our third paragraph, your topic sentence, something about censorship by curators, gallery directors, government authorities and the audience. Okay, there's also that issue of a lack of censorship in the internet. Um, some artists that you could use in your extend part of your paragraph. Bill Henson, Santiago Sierra. Okay, your example, three aspects of the artwork to support your main point. SWOT and your concluding statement. So what you're going to do now is attempt each of those three paragraphs um, with those main ideas if they, they suit, if you agree with them. And our next video will be about writing a conclusion.